Good morning, children. Today we are going to do a lovely poem. The poem is "O oh, Captain, My Captain." Okay. Now, "O oh, Captain, My Captain" is uh, was written by Walt Whitman. Now, Walt Whitman was an American poet, often called the father of free verse. He is best known. for his controversial collection of poems leaves of grass his other popular works include the novel franklin evans the poetry collection drum taps the political work democratic whispers and so on the poem was first published in the pamphlet sequel to drum taps that contained 18 poems on the american civil war Now, here's a poem for you. I'll read that. O oh, captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near. The bells I hear. The people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But O oh, heart, 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 O oh, the bleeding drops of red. Way on the deck, my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. O captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills, for you the bouquets and ribbon wreaths, for you the shows are crowding, for you they call the swaying mass, the eager faces turning. Hear, captain, dear father. This arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer; his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm; he has no pulse, no will. The ship is anchored safe and sound; its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip, the victor ship comes in with object won. Exult to shows and ring o' bells, but I with mournful tread walk the deck. My captain lies fallen cold and dead. Now here's a summary of this poem. Now Whitman's "O Captain, My Captain" was published on November fourth, eighteen sixty-five, in the Saturday Press after Lincoln's assassination the same year. on april 14th so uh this was published in the saturday press after abraham lincoln was assassinated the poem which is classified as an elegy or mourning poem is an extended metaphor written on the assassination of abraham lincoln the captain in the poem represents the assassinated president the ship represents the war weathered nation following the civil war the prize one represents the salvaged union so now as um, now the, uh, the poem here is actually an elegy which is a mourning poem and it is an extended metaphor and it's written on the assassination of abraham lincoln okay so the captain in the poem represents the assassinated president that is the uh, president abraham lincoln and the ship represents the war weathered nation following the civil war that is immediately after the civil war okay uh, the you know uh, the uh, nation was actually torn okay and um, uh, this uh, ship actually represents the war weathered nation after the war The prize one represents the salvage union. The poet, torn between relief and despair, captures America's confusion at the end of the Civil War. So the poet is torn between relief, relief that uh, uh, America has got its um, freedom, and at the same time despair because its president, Abraham Lincoln, is dead. Captures America's confusion at the end of the Civil War. It was a time of many conflicting sentiments. 
and he immortalizes the sense of uncertainty in the poem. The sailor in the poem addresses the captain and at once celebrates the safe and successful return of the ship and mourns the loss of the captain. Now in the first stanza, the speaker expresses his relief that the ship has reached its home port at last and describes hearing people cheering. Okay, so uh, the sailor here is addressing the captain uh, who, and uh, at, at the same time he also celebrates the successful return of the ship. Okay, and at the same time also mourns the loss of the captain. Now, in the first stanza, the speaker is quite relieved that the ship has reached its home port at last. And also, he can hear the people cheering and jeering. Despite the celebrations on land and the successful voyage, the speaker reveals that his captain's dead body is lying on the deck. Okay, though everybody on land has been, you know, cheering and jeering, there have been celebrations on land and the voyage has been successful. America has been liberated, but the speaker actually reveals that his captain, okay, that is Abraham Lincoln is dead. Okay, that is his captain's dead body is lying on the deck. In the second stanza, the speaker implores the captain to rise up and hear the bells. Okay, the captain is already dead, but here the speaker actually implores, pleads with the captain to just rise up and hear the bells. Because those are the bells, the church bells, okay, which have, uh, which, <coughs> which, um, you know, on the, um, uh, have been, uh, as soon as uh, there's a lot of relief, okay that um, America has been liberated and uh, there are uh, bells, the church bells can be seen ringing. <coughs> Wishing the dead man could witness the elation. So uh, he hoped, the speaker hopes that uh, the captain could see all this happiness. Everyone adored the captain and the speaker admits that his death feels like a horrible dream. In the final stanza, the speaker juxtaposes his feelings of mourning and pride. So, uh, the speaker just hopes that his, it is just a dream that his captain is dead. But finally, he has to agree, he has to finally agree that after all, the captain is dead. Okay? Now, so, We'll go back to the first stanza. Okay, now I'll be doing the first stanza here. Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near. The bells are here. The people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But a oh, heart, heart, heart. Oh, the bleeding drops of red, way on the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold and dead. Okay. So, we'll just do an explanation of this stanza. Okay. Now, here in this first stanza, the speaker is shouting with excitement, a lot of happiness. Okay. To the ship's captain that they have made it home safe and sound. Okay. And the ship has endured tough storms and impenetrable winds. And finally, it is back on the dock. Now, after a tiresome journey, they're all ex exhausted. And the mission has been a success. Although the ship is yet to arrive safely in the harbor, as soon as the ship uh, comes close to the harbor, the people are all very, very happy. Okay, the people are seemingly exalted by its sight. The church bells are ringing. Okay, they could hear the church bells ringing. The people are all excited as a ship near the harbor. The keel has been thrown in to steady the moving ship. So, as soon as the ship comes close to the harbor, the keel has been thrown in. Okay, and as the ship nears the harbor, uh, the poem takes on a dark turn. That is, Okay, uh, something, you know, foreboding, that is something uh, grim, 
uh, something unfavorable was going to be revealed. Okay, so the words here, grim and daring, have been used to the twisting, uh, referring to the twisting mode. Okay, the speaker now speaks from the heart. Okay, so the speaker is uh, very um, sad. Okay, his heart is shattered and torn over the death of the ship's captain. <coughs> okay, so he is in grief, okay, over the death of the captain. The breakdown of emotion is surging from the sailor as a fallen captain lies beside him. Okay, so the captain is lying on the deck. Okay, he is dead. Okay, and you know, uh, a lot of emotion. Okay, there's a breakdown of emotion coming from the sailor. Drops of blood are flowing on the ship's deck. So, uh, the president, okay, <clears throat> is lying dead on the deck of the ship, okay, and drops of blood are flowing on the ship's deck, okay, and these uh, drops of blood refer to the blood of Abraham Lincoln. Now, in this poem, extended metaphors have been used. <clears throat> the first is captain, which is used in the first line, that runs throughout the poem. Here the captain represents Abraham Lincoln who loses his life in the battle. <clears throat> the next is voyage. Voyage represents a civil war, okay? And the journey of the voyage is full of trials and tribulations, okay? But now the ship is nearing the port and it represents the timeline of the civil war. Then ship. Ship represents the US that has undergone the civil war. <clears throat> now, here, what is the rhyming scheme? Okay. We'll take the, okay, the first stanza. <clears throat> Look at this. Uh, we'll take the rhyming scheme. So, done, one. Okay. Done, one, A, A. Exalting, daring, B, B. Then, heart. Okay. C, red, okay, D, then lies, E, then again, dead is D, okay. <coughs> so, the rhyming scheme is A, A, B, B, C, D, E, D. Then, rhyming words, okay, rhyming words we have done. Okay, rhyming words are done one, exulting, daring, red, dead. <coughs> then, figures of speech. Okay, we'll take the first one. Oh, captain, my captain. Okay, now, oh, captain, my captain, it is an apostrophe. Because the poet here has used an apostrophe to call his dead captain. Okay, and the phrase, O oh, captain, my captain, expresses love and attachment of the speaker with his captain. Now, it is also in repetition because the word captain is repeated. It is, again, a metaphor too because captain represents <coughs> American um, president, Abraham Lincoln, who loses his life in the battle. Second one. Our fearful trip is done. It is a transferred epithet. <clears throat> Here, the adjective fearful is transferred from people to trip. Third one. The ship has weathered every rack. Now, look at this. It is personification because the ship has been given the human quality of weathering or withstanding. The fourth one, while follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. Again, now it is antithesis because we have opposite words, follow and steady are used in the same line. Okay, then again, it's also synecdoche here, 
the part of the ship that is keel is referred to instead of the whole ship. Then the fifth one, but of heart, heart, heart. It's repetition because the word heart is repeated. The poet repeats the word heart because of the speaker's grief at the loss of his captain. Okay, so children, the second and the third stanzas will do in the next session. Till then, go through this poem. Okay, thank you.